What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Tyrant's Mythic Difficulty Walkthrough for Halo 4, aka Legendary All Skulls On. And today we are doing the seventh mission in the game, Composer. Sorry, I just can't stop them. This is definitely one of the more challenging missions in the game. Probably the hardest Covenant-based mission. So first you're going to want to grab a hologram right here. And you're going to want to grab the sticky detonator from that poor Marine. Run all the way to this door, wait for it to open. And of course, assassinate this Jackal. You'll deploy a hologram just to kind of delay the enemy fire, deter them just a little bit. And then you're going to combat the enemies here. There's about half a dozen grunts, two shielded Jackals, and one marksman Jackal on the roof. Go ahead and take them all out. You don't necessarily need to kill the Jackal over there on the left side, but it's good to kill the one over there on the right. Once you're confident all enemies are down, go up here. You have two Jackal sniper snipers to worry about. Take them out with the pistol. And then crouch up up here, sprint jump to this side, Run to the control panel, use the sticky detonator to take out this side gunner, otherwise he will kill you. Now quickly jump back here, jump twice to the point where these pipes kind of merge the walkway, jump, throw a grenade, and you can get one, sometimes even two elites with a grenade throw. Now sometimes these grunts are here if you're too fast in the first part. And that's okay. Not a big deal. So we have three elites to worry about now. Again, if you watch my Mythic Tips and Tricks Guide Volume 4, you'll see how I took down both elites from the first wave, which is totally cool. You want to keep the Concussion Elite and one Zealot alive, because you'll need the Active Camo and the Concussion Rifle for later. The good thing about having to fight three of these guys is you get to see exactly how I deal with these guys right here. So, just in case it doesn't work. So, as you can see, I'm dodging that Zealot's attacks. Sometimes he'll run past you, sometimes not. But you want to sprint past him as he's running towards you, and then move around. Pardon me, I'm just a little bit out of breath here. But again, you want to use the hologram to distract the elites. It's far more effective than the light shield that you start out with. So right now we have two warriors left and one zealot. The warriors are your biggest opponents here. I'm going to go ahead and finish off that grunt. Now there are many ways to deal with these guys. You can even hide under the stairs and assassinate them if they don't know that you're there. But the best way to do that, of course, is if all the elites are upstairs. And that's very difficult to judge because you don't have radar, so you're not entirely sure where they are. Sometimes I'll deploy a hologram here and fire my pistol a few times just to try to lure them up here, but even that doesn't always work, so... Again, the stairs are probably the best option only if you have one or two elites left. So I'm going to get into a melee battle with this guy right here. Oh, shoot. He's got a friend. Yes. Okay. First zealot is down. I am not going to lose this battle. It's two versus one. This is where all of the covenant training comes in handy right here from the previous missions. All right. So I actually won that battle. I'm going to take that guy's active camouflage to deal with the final elite, the Concussion Warrior. Nearly all elites in Mythic Difficulty are either Warriors or Zealots. So I got him by camoing, waiting for him to come up here. I did mention in my guide that there are basically three modes for elites. Patrol, Normal, and Berserking. Berserking being the most dangerous. So grab a Concussion Rifle active camo and a DMR position yourself right about here on the right side you want to put your foot about just part way off this thing right here just to portion it hit right here in the dark spot 
and it should propel you directly up here. Skipping all the enemies below. If you have trouble with this, again, practice it a few times. Pause the video if you need to. Go back and watch where I placed my foot, but again, it's just partially off that little fork right there on the right-hand side. Grab the shotgun, juggle the DMR in here, because you will need it later. Run over here to the middle section. These hunters are a beast to fight. I'm trying to watch my tongue, because I know I have younger viewers. This hunter is the one that you're going to want to deal with first. I'm trying to get him away from the stairs right now. I don't want him going into that pit. Let's see if I can just try to use my grenades to bounce him away. Get him as close to the wall as possible. You can use grenades to soften him up as well. Obviously, stickies are the best because you can actually nail him dead on. Frags can be a little bit unpredictable. Switch out your concussion rifle for the sticky detonator just temporarily. It has two already loaded inside of it. We're going to use both sticky rounds for this one hunter. There are more sticky detonator rounds over there on the crate over there towards the right. So now we're going to have to charge this guy. Here's where things get a little bit iffy. Now again, just like in my Mythic Tips and Tricks video, it's all about getting comfortable with them. When you get behind him, if he does attack you, I think he's kind of at a stalemate right now. But if you're on the left side of him, he'll do kind of a back smack. If you're on the right, then he'll sort of swing his arm. And if you duck, you can easily avoid it. Their swings don't have nearly the same radius as they did in Halo Reach. Hunters in Halo 4 are definitely easier than Reach. So now we're going to use the sticky detonators from the crate over there to take out this hunter. We definitely didn't need nearly as many for the last one. So we're going to drain most of his health with these and then finish him off with the shotgun. The key here is basically knocking off his back armor. It gives you a much bigger hitbox. He's much more vulnerable. Unfortunately, he's in kind of a bad position right now, so we're going to have to try to lure him out just a little bit more. As you can see, he's facing me, but not at an angle that I can really attack him, either from the left or the right. You may come across this in your run as well, so I'm glad I did here. So I'm going to see if I can get his attention. Get him to turn around a little bit. You can use active camo to get around him as well. I'm going to see if I can lure him out in the open just a little bit. Sometimes you'll get lucky and the Marines and the Scientist on the opposite side will start shooting at him and draw his attention away from you. So I'm going to just lure him away for a second here. He's now out in the open. Again, it's just a matter of being comfortable with him. So I'm going to cloak myself just a little bit. Grab more shotgun ammo. And just blast him in the back. He cannot reach me, even though he is trying to retreat towards me. I can easily duck back inside the doorway without any trouble. Again, use active camo to sort of take him off guard. He is now down for the count. As you can see, using those sticky detonator grenades definitely paid off. Once he's dead, go back and retrieve your DMR. Cortana, door controls. Make sure you also have your concussion rifle. And of course your active camo. And go ahead and hit the button. That is definitely the hardest part of the mission. Again, if you need a little bit of a recap, you can either watch the first half of this video again. Or check out Tyrant's Myth uh, Mythic Tips and Tricks Volume 4 Special Edition Composer. So this part is timed. You can rush all the way across if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. You cannot proceed forward until the game lets you. So just sit back and enjoy the view a little bit. That is the composer colossal in size. It is what the didact is after to compose the entire human race, turn them all into Prometheans. That's right, I said all, not us. <laughs> Whoa! That guy almost became Swiss cheese. 
provide cover for the evacuation. You will get to drive one of those a little bit later. For now, we're going to run up here. I'm going to go ahead and melee this guy to death. You do not have to. You do lose a little bit of karma when you do it. But it does make this a little bit faster. Otherwise, it just sort of takes his time. Grab the grenades. Cloak. You've got one jackal shielded and one grunt up here. Both are down for the count. Obviously, the jackal is your highest priority because he is the hardest to kill. Although, though, with the DMR, it has knockback, which the battle rifle and the pistol do not have. Just like that. There's another jackal over here, two over here total, shielded, and one marksman just beyond the door. I can tell I killed the marksman because he dropped his carbine. I'm going to try not to lose shields here. There are also two grunts over there as well. When you kill the first one, the second one will advance. So I'm not overly thrilled that that first one got a little bit in the way prematurely. But that's okay. Not a big deal. He'll still be relatively harmless to you. Jackals are down over there on the other side. We still have two grunts. We have an additional third grunt on a plasma cannon and one elite. Now once you kill all the grunts, the elite will start running in this direction. There is a way to counter that, and I have never seen it used before up until now. What you're going to want to do is cloak yourself, move over to this direction, zoom in, kill the final grunt because he won't be facing you, use the service tunnels to avoid the elite. We could back smack him if we wanted to. Not going to bother. We're going to do the first airlock instead. You could also cloak here just as a safety measure. Run to the far door. This will trigger the door on the bottom to open. Then run back to the crate. Basically, we want to lose the attention of the enemies down below. So cloak yourself. Being very sneaky here. And quickly drop down, run through the door, run down here, and try to back smack this warrior. Now, I was a little bit slow, so I'm going to go ahead and, there we go, engage him in melee combat. Took him down relatively easily. We've got a couple of jackals and a couple of grunts over here. They'll be engaging the marines and the scientists in the room just to the left of you. And that'll leave you with one warrior elite. A lot of times I've noticed that he advances. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he'll stay on the far wall. I actually like it when he advances because this means that I don't have to worry about the grunts that will emerge from the doorway over there on the left. So I'm going to quickly engage him in melee combat. Again, this is where your covenant training from the previous missions really does come in handy. This is going to be the second use for the concussion rifle. The first one obviously was for the forklift. This is the second one. You want to take out these grunts first. Try not to lose any shields because you will lose shields in this trick jump. You may not lose them entirely, but you will lose them partially. The grunts are down at this point. When you get up here, cloak yourself, walk very slowly to the corner. And you want to have your back to the banister of the door. Aim for the corner with the light. Jump, shoot two concussion rounds, and you should be right up here. You might want to crouch, too. You're going to have to do a series of jumps. There are a lot of invisible barriers up here. But as you can see, we are outside of the map now. We can skip the entire second airlock without any trouble. If you wanted to, you could even go further and actually get to the space battle on the other side. But obviously, if your goal is to complete the mission on Mythic or Lazo, you'll want to do this instead. So bunny hop over here. When you hit the right checkpoint, boom, you'll glitch right inside. That is not an edit. When you reach the threshold of the door, sprint, rush to take these zealots off guard. That seems to be the most reliable way. Go ahead and fill up on DMRM over here. Grab a sticky detonator in place of your concussion rifle because you will not need the concussion rifle again. Place Cortana in the device 
and this will take a few minutes. Dr. She's Tilson, going to activate the ship's MAC guns. Or I should Here. say the space station's Any MAC guns. Cortana's bringing the defense grid online now. Okay. Apparently they don't do much good either. We'll broadcast the final evac order. Oh, <laughs> and Marine went flying. Now, as I was stating dark. before, the best way to take out these invisible zealots is just before the threshold of the door, sprint inside, hug the railing, and they don't seem to notice you nearly as much. It's definitely the most reliable way, and you really don't want to die at this if point in the mission. Pull this off and actually get back Again, the hardest part really is behind you. So sprint over here, try to take out the jackal first, then worry about the grunt, then you've got the Marksman Jackal. We probably lost a little bit of shields there. Not a big deal. There's a way to get them back in here that, again, I have not seen before until now. So slowly take out the Grunts and Jackals. You've got three Elites to worry about in here. Up to three. I've seen two warriors before, and there is a elite major, actually. I thought it was a zealot at first, because quite oftentimes he has a sword. But apparently he starts out with a carbine. That I did not know. That's what happens when you don't have theater mode, 343 Industries. So we're going to kind of bunny hop here to take out the rest of the jackals and the grunts. And I'm going to show you a cool little trick. If you hide under the stairs here... Just like I was telling you with the Battle of the Four Elites of the Apocalypse at the beginning of the mission, you can actually take them out from beneath the stairs, but here's why this particular staircase is valuable. They don't tend to attack you. At the very least, it's a good way for you to get your shields back, so if you do have to engage them in melee combat, you will have full shields, and I highly recommend full shields when dealing with Elites. So... We talked earlier about how elites tend to have three different modes. Patrol, normal, and berserking. Patrol is obviously when they don't know that you're there. They are completely oblivious to your presence. They're walking typically slowly, and it's not a big deal. Normal mode is when they are aware of your presence, but they tend to stand in place and throw grenades. This is what the catch scroll is intended for. This follows the general rules of Mythic Difficulty. Now, the third mode is Berserking. This is when they tend to use their primary weapon instead of grenades, and they tend to strafe a lot. This is their most dangerous mode. It is very difficult from the close to the distance, and obviously, he is Berserking right now because he sees me. So we're going to use the stairs to our advantage to get our shields back. This is the harder staircase to use because it's harder to tell if they're coming or not. Unlike the Four Elites of the Apocalypse staircase, which is more narrow, and you can also see a little bit more above you. Here they can tend to go on the left or the right. As you can see, other enemies are also coming down here as well. So this doesn't just work for Elites. But again, these guys are just a little bit harder to predict. So this is, I think, the final Jackal. But once you've killed enough enemies, this staircase is an excellent way to draw them to you. It's pretty much 100% safe. And you are guaranteed shields, and that is really the most important thing. So right now, you know, I've had runs before where there was a second warrior up there. I'm not sure what triggers him, or what triggers him to despawn. But obviously right now, our biggest worry is the Sword Elite, which appears to be a Major. There he is. But see, he doesn't even seem to notice you, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cloak as he's going back up the stairs. As you can see, he's in patrol mode, he's going very slowly, and I'm going to assassinate the crap out of him. Boom! We have one Elite to go. Now, there are a couple of ways to deal with them. You can use the Sticky Detonator, which seems to trigger an odd dodging behavior with him. Otherwise, you can skip him entirely. Now, they have a really hard time shooting through these rails. 
but you can shoot back at them. This doesn't always work though, because if they lean over the railing, they can still get you. And of course, down here, you really don't have much of a place to hide. So I'm going to see if I can just skip around him entirely, as long as he's not guarding the door too well. As you can see, it just opened. I'm going to make sure I have full shields here. But look, he's looking right at me, and he's not shooting at me. So I'm going to stick him with the sticky detonator, causing some weird dodging movements. And I'm going to run past him as soon as he steps away from the door. There we go. Run. Oh, run. That door closes very quickly, so you have little to no chance of dying from doing that. You can try it with multiple enemies there, but I wouldn't recommend it. So this is the final part of the mission. You are now pretty much through with the worst of it. I took my time there a little bit more because it was the last major skirmish outside of a vehicle. You're going to use the mantis here to mow down waves and waves of covenant. And apparently the didact has found the composer. So use this giant mech to mow down everything. <laughs> B. Fi, fo, bum. I smell the blood of Covenant scum. Be they live or be they dead, I'll pop them all in the head. On a funny similar note, I noticed that RC Master uses the DMR to take out some of these guys firsthand. That is a totally valid method. I tend not to do that because I don't know whether or not I have shields after that last encounter. And there are Jackal Snipers down there. And of course, if you don't have shields, one shot from the Jackal Sniper will take you out. If you have shields, it usually takes multiple shots. But again, there's no real easy way to tell. Well, I guess when you're crawling in the Mantis, but at that point, they've noticed you. So you have several waves to deal with here. You've got Grunts and Jackal Snipers on the initial wave, along with a few Ghosts. I'm just going to be very careful here. Most of those grunts have fuel rod cannons. They're very easy to dodge. Also, be very careful of the ledge over there on the right-hand side because that is a bottomless pit and you will fall off and die. There's that pesky jackal sniper. My rule of thumb here is to not go any further than the number three. And no, this mission was not brought to you by the number three. Ah, 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 ah. And no, I'm not drunk, believe it or not. Now you can also use the little hidey hole by going up the stairs and to the left, very similar to the way that I did in my legendary run. Do not do this with the wraiths though. As I found out the hard way, if the wraiths even hit remotely close to you, it only takes three indirect, mind you, wraith blasts to kill a fully shielded mantis. Keep that in mind. So as you can see, Cortana predicts another wave, more phantoms will arrive, drop off more troops, the first wraith will arrive, a second wraith will be dropped off very shortly, more closer to your location. And then in the next round, you'll be dealing with banshees. Now the elites are the hardest ones to deal with here because they have powerful shields and they can be a real pain in the butt. A lot of these guys also have fuel rod guns, making them even more difficult, and they tend to hide a lot, and it's just, it, it's a major pain. Again, you want to be as careful as you can be here, because this is the last battle in the mission. Now, the Wraith shots are very easy to dodge. The secondary gunners tend to be a lot more threatening. Now, this Wraith is obviously the one in closer proximity, so we're going to concentrate on that first, then on the second Wraith. As you can see, their main gun is easy to dodge. They go down pretty quickly. The great thing about Mythic is you have the benefit of the Mythic and Tilt Skulls, which makes the Mantis a very powerful machine. It has recharging shields that are not affected by the Black Eye Skull. Second Wraith is down for the count. Those are probably your biggest oppositions here. Again, aside from these shielded elites, 
which also tote fuel rod gun. Or I guess the more appropriate name would be fuel rod cannon, since fuel rod guns were really only in Halo 1. They had kind of a mortar effect. They're all hiding around the composer, too. You know what's funny? The didact has found the composer, but he's doing nothing right now. I think he's just kind of sitting back in his chair and laughing. Using his force powers to control things, you know. So again, this is the tough part right here. I'm gonna take my time. You have a few pairs of ghosts that show up throughout the fight. Your rockets can home in on them, by the way. But your Vulcan cannon over there on the uh, right arm is a very powerful weapon, especially against enemy vehicles. It really is too bad that the Mantis battles in this game are so narrow. It would have been so much more fun to be able to use this on missions like the Claimer or that first major encounter on Requiem. But no, we're kind of confined to a small area here, which really sucks. You can technically explore, but you'll die very quickly. It's very easy to get surrounded. Hopefully we'll see more open-ended vehicular combat in Halo 5, because the vehicular combat in Halo 4 just did not live up to Halo standards. Which is amazing because they had so much open-ended combat in this game. I mean, really, missions like Reclaimer and Requiem are some of the most open-ended missions I have played in the Halo series. I'm surprised they failed so badly at the vehicular part. So if you're listening, for Halo 5, please, 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 if you're gonna have the Mantis back, let us use it in more open-ended combat. And that goes for the Banshee too. The Banshee battles were also kind of crappy. But still, the Mantis is a very cool vehicle, probably one of my favorite additions to the franchise yet. I mean, who does not want to control a 20-foot mech? Armed with rockets and a Vulcan cannon. Yeah. Now, these guys are hiding quite a bit, so I'm going to start moving up. I mean, I really don't know what else to do here. I'll try to use that rock for cover. Keep in mind, you do have a second Mantis available to you, just in case this one gets too badly damaged. I'm getting hit a few times here. That's right, I'm gunning you down, I'm gunning you down. I have seen the top of the mountain, and you will worship me as though I were a god. Oh, Jesus! Jesus! I regret nothing. I have lived as few men dare to dream. All right, I promised I wouldn't curse. I promised I wouldn't curse. God donkey. Ugh, oh, okay. I think he's dead. Whew. Okay, obviously you want to take more careful measures here. Might want to use the rock over there on the left as cover as well. Since my mantis is on fire, and I don't want to take any chances at this point. I'm going to grab this second one right here, which is what it's there for, might I add. If we hadn't had so much trouble with those elites, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But as Cortana said, the Banshees are about to show up. They've, of course, they've got their plasma cannons as their main weapon, but they also have fuel rod cannons as a secondary weapon, and they can be very devastating. Especially to a Mantis that's on fire. You really only need to kill four of these guys, but I tend to kill anything that is a threat to me at all. Again, you're at the end of the mission here. It is not the place to screw up. So we're drawing them towards us now. Again, they go down very easily on Mythic. I think it's mainly because of the Tilt Skull. They just are a lot more vulnerable against the Mantis's Vulcan Cannon. Again, they do home in, but I don't have a reticle, so I'm not exactly sure where it is. Actually, to be quite honest with you, the reticle for the vehicles is in the dead center of the screen. Unlike the reticle for 
ground combat, which is about an inch below the center of the screen. So they are in two different places. Be aware of that. So this should be the last Banshee we have to worry about. A lot of times Banshees on this mission tend to fly into walls and just get stuck there. So I'm not overly worried. Oh, okay, one more. You want some of this? Come on. Yeah, that's right. Quite honestly, I feel quite all-powerful on this mech. So this is pretty much the last wave at this point. Your major opposition is behind you. Another wave of Banshees will show up, but again, they tend to get stuck in walls. If not, again, all you really have to do is just hang back and take them out from here. Use that little position for cover if you need to. It's great against Banshees. Not so much against Wraiths. But it also works for the enemies as well. The ground foes, the infantry. The Mary Jane. The Bling. These phantoms Doctor tend to just Phillips, kind of fly warning? around and Doctor try to shoot at you. I don't know how many of them actually drop off Head troops. I think it's more like they just make their rounds, so to speak. And as you can see, they're leaving. I don't see anyone here. I'm gonna take one little precautionary look. I'm gonna shoot this guy dead. I know there's still some grunts over there. Sometimes there is a stationary turret over there too. I don't see him over there at the moment. And as you can see, that Banshee over there on the left is just stuck flying into the ground for no reason. All of those Banshees are doing the same thing. Look, he's just sitting there. You could technically hijack this thing and fly it to the end of the mission, but with my luck, I bet you anything I would get plasma pistol and fall right off the edge. Not taking that chance at this point. Just like in Halo Reach, grunts can overcharge you. Now, usually there's a stationary gun over there. I don't know why he's not there now, but be aware of his presence. There's a little cluster of crunts over there on the right-hand side. Maybe I can avoid them, maybe not. Oh, nope. Fine. Take this! That's right, my little babushkas. Run! <laughs> and that is pretty much the end of the mission right there even though you still have to basically insert Cortana into a console I'm going to back up here just to be on the safe side and wait like two minutes for her to do her thing track the doctor this is it your combat's over mission complete well done this is one of the more challenging missions of the game Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Again, I apologize for being somewhat out of breath here. If you enjoyed this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Watch the rest. And again, check out halo.bungie.org for the written portion of the guide, which is being released this week alongside the videos. And now you can watch the Didact extract Rod A from slot B. No, I'm just kidding. The composer from the space station. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Check out mythictimer.com for more exciting Halo videos every week. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off. Don't think about the composer. Only focus on finding me, Tilson. Tilson. Sandra Kay. Female, 51 years of age. Doctor of Archaeology, Fagasti Institute. Gutter. Biosignature stable on 350 level. B deck. Thank you, Cortana.
They've compromised the station's hull.